These missions take you deep into the heart of Anthem. Today in Absolute Anthem, we are diving deep into the many firearms that will exist in the world of Anthem. We've got some confirmations, we've got some knowns, we've got lots of unknowns, we've got some theory crafting to do. In general, I've just been doing a bunch of sleuthing, if you will, through a lot of the footage, images, gameplay demonstrations that we've gotten for Anthem over the last two years. Really diving deep into some of the details on the individual weapon archetypes so I could bring you today's video. Now, let me make it very clear. We're talking firearms only here. We're not talking javelin weaponry. We're not talking melee weapons. We're not talking ultimate abilities. We are focusing on the firearms that you'll actually pick up in your hands and wield to engage the enemy. So why don't we start with the sort of workhorse, one of the most common weapons in any video game ever, the assault rifles. We've seen these all over Anthem at this point. We've seen the Ranger wielding them. We've seen the Scars wielding them. We've seen the guard inside of Fort Tarsus wielding them. They appear to come in many different uh, shapes, sizes, forms, and functions. But I think my favorite and the one that is just chock full of detail is the one that we see in this image right here of the Ranger. This assault rifle is just, it looks to just be decked out. I mean, we got a scope on this thing. It's got some more of that leather fabric wrap potentially actually having some proper function here to protect the uh, weapons internals from dust and debris. I mean, this is a game world where we know We've got these javelins flying through storms and dealing with all sorts of craziness. I mean, they're going under water. Perhaps that leather protects from general debris getting inside of the chamber and blocking up rounds from ejecting, from being cycled into the chamber itself to be fired. There's a lot of things that that cloth could actually be doing, and I love that detail there. I also love the sort of carrying handle, as I've been calling it, right? Because while it could probably double as a carrying handle, it looks like it's there to protect the scope from impact damage, which is pretty cool. We also see a very similar piece of metal framework running along the trigger where the user's hand actually is protecting the user's hand from impact. So there's just a lot of things here that seem to be designed for a very specific purpose. And that purpose is to be wielded in combat by an exosuit that can fly through the freaking air. So those metal bars might function like bash guards on an ATV or an off-road motorcycle. You know, ripping through the woods, you don't want to get whipped by some thorn or some thick branch that breaks one of your fingers. This could be doing some of the same here. And I just, I don't know, it's just a fun little detail. It's not to say that it's a thousand percent practical, but I think it looks really cool and it adds to the overall personality of the rifle as well as some of the other rifles we see. This image though, as well as some of the other weapons we're gonna talk about today, begs the question of just what can we modify in Anthem? We know there's customization for weapons. We know that you can craft weapons. So when we craft a weapon, what are we crafting? The base version of it? Do we craft it with all of its designated attachments, scopes, and barrel extensions? Or can we add those things to other weapons? Can we add a scope? Can we add different scopes? Can we add different barrel extensions, different muzzle brakes, etc., etc.? That is something that simply hasn't been answered yet. I am curious nonetheless. Let us move on and talk heavy machine guns and grenade launchers. I'm pairing these two together because we see a lot of footage of the Colossus wielding both of these. Now we know that the machine guns in this game can only be wielded by the Colossus. I'm wondering if it's the same deal with the grenade launcher, and even if that's not the case, the grenade launcher we're seeing in footage here wielded by the Colossus has very clearly been designed for use by the Colossus. How do I know that? Well, much like the machine gun we see the Colossus wielding, it has no stock. You will notice that all of the other javelins wield firearms that have stocks, unless, of course, they're like machine pistols or pistols. But when it comes to full assault rifles, DMRs, shotguns, they have stocks so they can manage recoil and actually manage the weapon itself, just like a normal person would. The Colossus doesn't seem to need to worry about that because it's freaking massive, its pneumatic arms are probably a lot more powerful than any of the other javelins, and it can simply hold its hand out there, grab the front of the weapon, and just manage the recoil like that without having to use a stock to actually brace the impact of the recoil itself. So, again... It looks like that grenade launcher has specifically been tailored for this Colossus, even if the other classes will eventually be able to use grenade launchers. I haven't seen any confirmation from, from Mark on that one, whether or not grenade launchers are locked in to the Colossus itself. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was another Colossus-specific weapon. I think in general, Bioware is keeping a lot of things under wrap. There's a lot of things that we just don't know about just yet. So, really cool. I should also point out that the Colossus cannot wield the next 
set of weapons we're going to talk about, which are machine pistols, uh, pistols, SMGs. I'm just going to group those all into one because I've really only seen machine pistols so far, or at least I've only seen things that appear to be machine pistols. I haven't seen any just really simple semi-automatic like 1911 or Glock style pistols. I have seen a lot of pistols with long fat magazines, uh, barrel extensions, and even optics on them that appear to be more machine pistol, if you will. We see the storm wielding one of these that is like all decked out. And we even see the Ranger have one of these equipped in a holster when they first come out of the Strider in that 18 minute gameplay demo we got not that far back so again the colossus can't wield these but they look pretty damn cool and they also beg the question of just how far once again can we actually modify these weapons for personal use let's move forward and talk about some stuff that we know is confirmed but that we haven't seen since the e3 2017 trailer including sniper rifles and shotguns now when we talk sniper rifles I'm hesitant to really call the rifle we see in the 2017 trailer a sniper rifle. It's more of a marksman rifle or a DMR. It's semi-auto. It does have a scope. We see the scope actually zoomed in and be used. But I also want to point out that this weapon probably does not exist in the world of Anthem anymore. <laughs> it's, it's probably gone. In fact, I think just about all the weapons we've seen in that E3 2017 trailer, while their archetypes still exist, we know that because it's been confirmed, I don't think they exist in that visual form or shape or size anymore. We probably won't see that shotgun. We won't see that sniper rifle or DMR because those are just old designs. I mean, they look like some of the earliest iterations of Anthem's firearm aesthetic. In fact, that DMR looks like a weapon from Mass Effect to me. I mean, it looks like, you know, an unfolding weapon from Mass Effect. And there's a good chance it was taken from Mass Effect. So they could put that demo together. It was probably in the game when they were working on it to start to iterate on what they want, what they don't want with their weapon design. I mean, that's how a studio functions, right? Sometimes if they've worked on other projects, they're going to use those other projects for a baseline and then build off of that. And I think that might have been what actually happened there with that marksman rifle. And even with that shotgun, they both just to me scream like that's almost kind of like a Mass Effect design. And then it just boom. You know, they ended up going a completely different direction, which I'm happy because I think all the weapons we've seen thus far have a lot more personality than either of the weapons that we saw back in that 2017 trailer. But I'm curious to know whether or not we're going to get bolt action rifles. I know there's a bunch of you out there who are screaming for it because you're all little sniper boys and sniper girls and you like your sniper rifles. You like your big bolt action sniper rifles like you like sitting in the back supporting your team taking those big pot shots, and I agree. It's a lot of fun, and I think having both of them would be a great thing. I think weapon variety here is very important. Give us DMRs, give us full-blown bolt action, one-shot, really powerful rifles. Give us shotguns with slugs. Give us shotguns with birdshot and buckshot. You know, the more variety there, the more personal choice a player has to sort of go down a specific path for their own play style, and I think that is a good thing. Let's move on and talk energy-based weapons versus kinetic kill weapons, because this is something I've been thinking a lot about recently, and especially when I went back and saw Jara's Wrath. So in the E3 2017 trailer, Jara's Wrath drops as a legendary volt rifle. We don't see the player shoot it at all. It's just a legendary volt rifle. We don't even see any stats in the weapon that would confirm that it actually fires an energy, energy projectile or an energy-based projectile. We just know it's called the volt rifle. All of the weapons we see in recent Anthem gameplay footage are kinetic kill weapons. So they are weapons firing an inert projectile to eliminate or do damage to their target. That's pretty much how weapons function here in the real world. An assault rifle, a shotgun, they're all kinetic kill weapons. Now that's not to say that the Volt Rifle couldn't still be a kinetic kill weapon. It could be a weapon that propels its projectile with electricity and maybe even supercharges that projectile with electricity. That would still make it technically a kinetic kill weapon, although it's also using a combination of electricity, so maybe it's no longer a kinetic kill weapon. There's a lot of things that could be happening with that. I'm just curious to know if there are elemental weapons at all anymore. You know, are they removed from the game? Are we going to see them uh, as like legendary weapons? What path did Bioware end up taking? Because in a year and a half, if, you know, going on more as we move into the release, a lot can change. And they could have just said, uh, elemental weapons aren't something we want to do anymore. And maybe they totally are something they want to do and we just haven't seen them in the game yet. So I'm curious to know just what happened to Jara's Wrath as a concept 
the idea of a volt rifle and what it was actually supposed to be in the first place because maybe it was never going to be an energy or an elemental based weapon it would still work in the lore while we do have a game world that is still very much you know based on uh hand-built things right there's not any mass production there's not a lot of high-tech stuff going on here we still have the fact that the arcanists were able to understand the storm that they got from the dominion and the fact that the storm wields elemental powers ice and electricity so there's a chance that they could adapt that technology to build weaponry i just don't know yet we don't know yet hasn't been confirmed yet anybody want to go bother mark darrow over on twitter i feel bad to tweet anything at the guy at this point there you have it, though, ladies and gentlemen. That is my breakdown of the current weapon archetypes in the world of Anthem, the knowns, the unknowns, the details. If you've been doing some personal sleuthing, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.